1956 года. День открытия 20-го съезда Коммунистической партии Советского Союза. The fateful 20th Party Congress. Six years to the day after the Soviet Union and China signed their treaty. Unexpected fireworks on the podium lit a fuse between two wary allies. Nikita Khrushchev was now the Soviet leader. In his opening address to the Congress, he lulled his audience with a familiar wooden language. Коммунистической партии Советского Союза в истории борьбы за укрепление могущества нашей Родины, за построение коммунистического общества, за мир во всем мире. But five days later, Khrushchev was to wake the delegates up with an unprecedented attack on Stalin, accusing him of murderous crimes. The secret speech wasn't filmed. But its impact was profound. It wasn't heard in just a stunned silence. I was looking down from the gallery. Almost everyone had bowed their heads. Many had their faces in their hands. They were crying. And as Khrushchev read his report, there were shouts from the floor. Shame on you, scoundrel. Put him on trial. Khrushchev hadn't calculated the fallout. Most of his listeners had been Stalin's creatures. In attacking Stalin, he was attacking them. The Chinese were particularly outraged. First, they didn't ask for our opinion, so we didn't know in advance. Secondly, their way of doing things was not right. It was crude. Stalin was an international figure. We told them it wasn't just your Russia that he influenced, but also Eastern Europe and other countries. When you treat him like this, where does that leave those other countries? Before making your secret report, you should have consulted all the Communist Party. Stalin did not belong to you. Stalin did not belong to Moscow. Stalin belonged to all of us. Of course, Khrushchev realized that in destroying the cult of Stalin, he was undermining Mao and dealing a blow to his potential opponent. Khrushchev said that he himself had heard Mao criticize Stalin. But the whole Chinese political system was a copy of Stalin's. The same totalitarianism, the same repressions. Khrushchev won the mantle of the heroic reformer for his denunciation of Stalin. But he was also trying to strengthen his position as leader, damning his predecessor to build up his own credentials for power. The irony was that for decades, he himself had been one of Stalin's closest lieutenants. He started a very risky game because if you want to talk about killers, Khrushchev was one of them, and one of the biggest. He destroyed practically the whole of Ukrainian intelligentsia. But I, as a diplomat, worry more about abroad. What will be the reaction abroad? I knew that, is the end, that it is the end of the world communist movement. I knew. The end would seem a long time coming. When Hungarians rose up against Soviet control in October 1956, Red Army tanks suppressed the rebellion. Under Khrushchev, as under Stalin, 
the Soviets were asserting that anywhere in the world, the communist movement belonged to them, a lesson that wasn't lost on the Chinese. From the Hungarian incident to Poland, they used military might to keep control. They used military power not to protect peace, but to compete for world domination and often provoked incidents around the world. <laughs>